Before we get started in today's video, I just want to do a little bit of a disclaimer. The version of Outriders that I'm playing and talking about is the demo version, which means what you're seeing is subject to change, however the game was very polished when I was playing it, and because it's only a few weeks until the actual launch, the 1st of April, I imagine that not much is gonna change, and what we're seeing here is what we can definitely expect when the full game is launched. Also, as you would imagine, the content that was available was in fact actually limited, a few mechanics that you might be interested in are not implemented within the demo, such as crafting. The gameplay that I got to actually experience was the prologue, two main campaign missions, and also a few side quests. There was also a few other restrictions that I do need to speak about when it comes to the demo. There was restrictions on level progression, there was restrictions on customization of characters, there was also a limit to the drops and rewards so you couldn't just farm it, which is completely understandable. And well, it's even more understandable once you consider the fact that your progression from the demo does carry through to the actual game. It is at this point where I'd also like to point out if you do want to experience this game and the demo version then it's completely free and this game is cross-platform compatible so even if you've got friends on consoles you can actually go and play with them if you're on the PC. I will leave a link down below so if you do like today's video and you do like what you're seeing in this game then you can grab some buddies and go and experience it yourself. The co-op element is limited to only free players though, I do want to point that out. User accessibility in this game is actually brilliant. I'm playing this on the PC platform so for me, sometimes I like to casually play with a control pad and because the cross-platform functionality in this game, they fully implemented support for the controller. The game has a certain ease of usability regardless of whether you're using keyboard or mouse or whether you're using controller. Navigation of the menus and everything seems to be on par with each other and the game seems to be fought out for multiple platforms. It doesn't seem to really favour any platform and doesn't do any weird trade-offs that you can see in other titles. Okay, so moving on to what the gameplay is like. Okay, so the way that I would describe this game is that it's kind of like an RPG with cover shooter elements with some looter shooter moments like Destiny 2. It's kind of like Destiny 2 crossed with Gears of War, let's say, which in fact the developers People Can Fly did develop for Gears of War as well. They also made some other great games like Bulletstorm and also Painkiller. And I have to admit, I did feel the inspiration for Gears of War when actually playing this game. I also really did get big vibes of Destiny when it came to the looting system, when it came to item drops as well as weapon drops, and just the way the leveling system scales when in co-op. In co-op as well, there's no real way of other players rushing ahead of you, because this game implements a voting system, meaning players have to call a vote, well, in order to be able to move into a new area. This is really good if you are an experienced player and you're playing with someone new and probably will help them enjoy the game a lot more. Now moving on to abilities, there are four classes currently in the game. They all do have unique abilities and what we notice when playing is that the abilities actually complement each other. It is really fun to create some devastating combos. Finding a class that fits your playstyle is going to be necessary. This is because you can't just freely change out, instead you're going to have to start a new character in order to play as a new class. Interestingly, in this game, the kill rewards are also very thought out. The kill reward is changed depending on what class you are. If you have a class that is suited to up close combat, then you get health bonuses and rewarded for getting kills up close. In some situations, using the cover mechanics may not actually be the best option. Sometimes the best option is to actually take fire, but also get a few eliminations to get back up to full health. This actually made it really fun, really fast paced, and has enough freedom for you to approach a situation the way you want to. It is really satisfying to be pressured and be under fire, to the point where you think, oh my god, I'm not going to make it, I'm going to go down here then to just turn around and take down a crowd of enemies, and then to just be golden and to get back into the fight. Abilities are very powerful in this game. On the other hand, if you do like the cover mechanics in the game, and you like to beam enemies from a distance, the game definitely has you covered in that aspect too. The gunplay is absolutely solid. Gameplay can also be affected by what equipment you use, what guns you use, the side effects on those certain items. In other words, there are a lot of systems and a lot of mechanics 
tricks to get your head around. However, it's not overly dull and throwing too many systems in play. You will pick them up in no time and you will have a lot of fun exploring it. Which brings me on to the skill tree. Wow, this skill tree is impossibly big. I could imagine by the time you get to end game, which is about 35 hours. Well, from the information that I've read on this game, I imagine you'll end up picking one of the paths that it allows you to go through. And by the end of it, I just imagine you'll feel like a god. Because even in the demo, we only had like two skill points to spend. And even only with the basic stuff, wow, we felt very powerful. Again, when you use the right abilities and have a perfect combination like me and Saber did, the effects are definitely most amplified. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's a good vibe. And the raw gameplay mechanics, the leveling system, the looting system, the ability system, the skill points that you get to spend, all just add to the enjoyability of the game. Now onto the story elements of the game. I didn't really find it too interesting, let's say. It's not bad, but it didn't actually grab me and really bring me in. I felt like what I experienced kind of suffered with the Chosen One complex, a trope I feel like a lot of games rely on, something that has been done to death at this point, something that I'm actually finding rather stale. However, it's not terrible writing, it's not something that's going to completely knock you off the game, or really a reason not to buy it, because well, the gameplay is more important in this one. So let's move on to performance and optimization. If your system meets the recommended specs, you're not going to have much issue here. If you're rocking an older generation card, however, there are in fact a few frame rate issues. Nothing too big, you can restart the game and it starts working again. There are also some minor few compatibility bugs. I found when using DS for Windows with my controller, it actually broke the game a little and didn't allow me to use abilities when in combat. There were also in fact a few glitches when playing, with the odd one needing a restart of the game. When coming out of a side quest I got the vendor showing up randomly. It didn't let me exit out of it neither so I had to restart the game. Randomly broken prompts that came up on the right here. I experienced a subtitle desyncing issue which is funny because we both actually got it in co-op. And also this, which is the crowning gem, the one that really made us laugh. This is opening a door that's already been opened, and well, the door's invisible. Because this is the demo of version 1 of Outriders, I imagine they are troubleshooting and trying to get error reports on things like this, and I imagine that some of these issues will be patched. Overall, the game is more polished than I thought it was going to be, and it really was definitely a respectable experience for the 4 hours that I played. Okay, so let's sum up my thoughts. Overall, I think this game has a load of potential. If you're into this type of game, I would say I recommend it. Plus, I think there's some brownie points to be had for having a demo that is free to everyone to play. Although the full experience isn't able to be had in a demo, and there are a few minor glitches here and there, the overall quality of the demo does what I think it was intended to do, and that is to show off the polish and the readiness of this game. I really like the gunplay in this game so much, much that I'm kind of itching for a first person perspective. However, it's completely acceptable if that never happens. I know my friend Saber is actually planning to get this game because he enjoyed it so much in the demo. However, do not just take my word for it. Watch some reviews here on YouTube to make more of an informed decision, or alternatively, depending on how well this video does, maybe I will do a future review on it with the final release of the game. With that said, I do hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please smash that like button for me it will really help out the channel also consider commenting down below on your thoughts of the demo maybe you're watching this after the final release comment let me know what you think about the game anyway with that said i've been jaguar from tech evolve and i will see you in the next video